I hope you enjoy these simple DIY fall decor ideas inspired by other creators. Welcome to The Chic Show. Today's video is part of Recreation Inspiration. I'm honored to be a guest host. This playlist is hosted by Loli D's Creations as well as Lady Red Crafting. Be sure and check out their channels in the description box below along with the playlist full of talented creators. I recently saw these yarn pumpkins on Pinterest and I loved the colors and the way they looked so this is our project number one. First I used one of these smaller styrofoam pumpkins from Dollar Tree and some gray yarn that I got from Walmart. This is actually an easy craft but it is time consuming. So with this yarn, I am just threading it through the hole that I made in the center with uh, a knife and I'm tying it into a knot and then I'm just going to be feeding that yarn back through that hole over and over again until the styrofoam is completely covered. So again, it's very simple, but it is time consuming. I was a little confused because I thought that these pumpkins were hollow inside and then eventually I remembered it's the plain styrofoam pumpkins that are not orange to begin with. They're just a styrofoam color and everything. Those are actually uh, hollow inside. So those are the ones that I would suggest doing this with. The smaller pumpkins just didn't have enough room to make a big enough hole so it got tight and you can see I switched to a doll needle to get that yarn through there. I do love the way it looks though. It did turn out absolutely beautiful. Now I used some of Dollar Tree's little cut off branch pieces and I used that as my pumpkin stem. The only thing I would do different for this particular pumpkin is I would have painted it a dark gray to begin with just so that styrofoam did not show through where there were gaps. So I did have to kind of even those out. Now this particular pumpkin is larger and it is hollow inside. So I think I said earlier it was just the plain white styrofoam ones, but these larger orange ones are also hollow inside so you've got a little bit more room to work with now i did not want this orange showing through so i did paint mine white and this one did not take nearly as long because i used a much chunkier yarn and this is a roving yarn from walmart Once I had this pumpkin full of yarn, I did secure it with a little bit of hot glue, and then I added another stem. For the next two pumpkins, I went back to those smaller pumpkins, but I did make the hole bigger this time, and I'm using these two different types of yarn. Now, these pieces of yarn are much too thin for this project so I ended up using three strands at a time and then eventually I even increased it to six strands because it was just taking too long but the results are worth the wait. And here are these two pumpkins and look how beautiful they are again I added some of those wood stems from Dollar Tree and then this project was complete and to complete the look like our inspiration piece I did add a couple of orange pumpkins these are the burlap pumpkins from Dollar Tree
Project number two is inspired by Lone Wolf. If you haven't seen his channel, be sure and check it out. He used some of the two colored tumbling tower blocks for his picture frame, and it does give it a very fall look. Now I started with the same tumbling tower blocks and I shifted gears as I went. I wanted to make this project my own and it's not a typical fall color that I end up with, but you'll see what I do with it in just a minute. I'm going to be painting some of the tumbling tower blocks with a pink fusion chalk paint and the other one with white. As I said, these are not typical fall colors, but I'm going to be pairing it with some of decoupage paper from Sonnet's Maker's Box. I used a piece of painter's tape to hold down my tumbling tower blocks so that I could give them a coat of paint. This decoupage paper is by The Painted Photographer and it is exclusive to Sonnet's Maker's Box. The frame I'm using was actually thrifted from the Goodwill bins and I did go around and give it a coat of uh, the white fusion paint and then I changed my mind and I went back with this kind of teal color that match it, matched the decoupage paper. I was really just trying to paint the outside part of the inside of the frame because the painting will be covering up the center part. So now I'm using some Mod Podge and I'm doing a little starter strip so that I can decoupage this paper onto the frame. Now that I have the bottom part secured with the Mod Podge, I'm going to continue on up the rest of the picture with that Mod Podge. Because I know I could not possibly have stayed completely within the lines with this Mod, mod Podge, I went ahead and added Mod Podge to the rest of the paint, even though it already has a built-in sealer. I wanted everything to have the same finish. I used Super Glue's wood glue from Dollar Tree to attach the tumbling tower blocks to the frame. I did pre-fit my tumbling tower blocks to the frame so I knew exactly how they would fit and exactly where to place them. So I just alternated the pink and the white all the way around the frame and then I was able to make some last minute adjustments. And while these may not be your typical fall colors, you could certainly adjust the colors even with this particular print and have more of a fall look. I chose to hang mine in my craft room so it matches perfectly. Project number three was inspired by this post I saw on Sonnet's Garden Bloom's Facebook page. So I'm using a couple of nesting boxes that I found at a thrift store. I'm painting this first one with white chalk paint and also I'm using some black Waverly chalk paint. The first box is actually from Dollar Tree but I got it for 30 cents. The second one is from a thrift store as well and I got it for 95 cents. So this first one, I did sand off some of that glitter, but it's really not gonna matter. It's not going to show. And I painted the top white. Now for around the edges, I'm going to be using one of these wall tiles from Dollar Tree. You could use the thicker one, but I didn't think that the lid would fit on with the thicker one, and even if I placed it below the lid as I'm going to do this piece, it would have stuck out at the top because when you cut them, they don't cut flush. And if you've ever cut one, you know what I'm talking about. But anyway, this one's still going to give enough texture. It did take two strips to go around the box and actually it didn't quite go all the way around. So I did have to piece together one more part at the seam but I'm just going to place this around the bottom part 
of the box so that the lid will still fit on securely. Then I'm adding the second one here and it left about a half an inch that I needed to fill in with another little bit of the sticker, but I just made sure that that part will go to the back. I placed a heavy duty rubber band around it to hold it until that was securely fastened. Now I'm using black chalk paint to paint around the rim of the lid. I'm trying to be very careful not to get the black on the top of the lid. Now I'm moving on to the second box. These hearts are actually fabric and they were decoupaged onto the box. So I am trying to pull those off. I did have to use my little finger sander to sand away any excess glue. Now I'm also painting the rim and the top of this box black. Now jumping back to that first box, I'm going to give it a coat of black chalk paint as well. And you can still see a little bit of that texture of that wall tile coming through. Now we're moving on to some decoupage paper from Sonnet's Garden Blooms Maker's Box. This is a Roy Cycle decoupage paper that you can only get in Sonnet's Maker's Box. And it has this beautiful brocade look as well as this crown, and I definitely wanted that crown to show. So I cut my piece of paper so that it would fit onto this larger box with the crown showing. I'm adding a little bit of Mod Podge, and then I'm going to spritz my decoupage paper with a little bit of water so it's a little bit easier to work with, and I'm gonna work on that starter strip. Once I get that starter strip going, I'm gonna go ahead and work around the box, working in sections with that Mod Podge and the decoupage paper. I am using a rubber glove to kind of rub over the top to rub out any wrinkles. When you wet the decoupage paper, you can kind of work with it as you go. So if you don't get it straight or you see some wrinkles, you have a little bit of time to pull it up and reposition it. I did cut my paper a little bit larger than the box because I did want it to kind of fold over the top. So I'm going around and cutting some little strips at the top so that I can decoupage each little strip into the box. And here's the way it looks once that decoupage paper is on. Now, this decoupage paper is also from Sonnet's Garden Blooms box, and it's a bunch of clock faces. So I'm looking for one that fits my smaller box about the size of that lid. All of these clock faces are absolutely beautiful. And now that I've found one that fits, I'm gonna go ahead and cut it out. This clock face was the best one for the fit for this top, but there was still a little bit of a white edge around there, so I went ahead and took that black chalk paint and I just painted around that edge so that there wouldn't be white showing. Now I'm adding on my Mod Podge. I'm just going to let, add it on to that entire top and then place my clock face down. I did end up going back and adding a little bit of hot glue where I had to add that extra piece of wall tile on the side. It did not want to hold down very well. So that hot glue certainly helped keep it in place. Although you may not be able to see the texture of the wall tile in the video, in person it really does show and looks so nice. So these two stacked up together, I think, are the perfect match.
This project, this pumpkin, was actually inspired by something I saw on IOD's Creative Tribe Facebook page. So I bought this pumpkin from Dollar Tree for $3 and I'm using some of IOD's ephemeral stamps from their summer collection. So I'm going to go ahead and give this pumpkin a coat of white chalk paint. I tried to stamp on it without painting it but that just did not work. So I, instead I'm going to be decoupaging on a piece of tissue paper. I'm going to take my stamps, the entire stamp collection. These are all separate stamps, but they're all on this one piece of backing so that I'm going to use the entire piece to stamp onto this tissue paper. Now I'm going to ink it up again and continue stamping until all the tissue paper is covered. Now I'm trying to decide exactly how I want to decoupage this on here. So I'm kind of cutting a few of these stamped areas out and then I'm going to use a paintbrush and some water to separate them and then decoupage them onto the pumpkin. I'm using water so that I don't have just a straight solid line between each of the stamps but honestly it really doesn't show when you decoupage tissue paper so you could totally just cut these with scissors. I'm using some of DIY's liquid patina. This is like Mod Podge but it's much thinner and I really love the way this works with this tissue paper. So I'm making a starter strip once again and then adding more of the liquid patina and then just brushing that tissue paper down and as you can tell you cannot see the edges of the tissue paper at least not very well so if you didn't want to use the water method you could certainly just cut them out now i'm going to continue doing this all the way around the pumpkin until i get it completely covered So I definitely recommend decoupaging onto the pumpkin rather than trying to stamp with all those little grooves. I certainly hope you've enjoyed today's recreation inspirations. I hope you'll be sure and check out Loli's channel and Katie's channel in the description box below along with the playlist. Here's another video I think you might like. Thanks for watching. Remember to share the chic. Bye now.